Welcome to Briarfest 2021 news video series part 3. There's been so much Briarfest news this past week, from more ticket information to model reveals and information about an event that's actually not Briarfest. Let's get to it. We're actually going to start off this video with an event that is not Briarfest, but it's kind of like a mini version of Briarfest. It's called Briar Boot Camp and it is coming up in just a few weeks. This event is basically an online substitution to the event Briar West. Briar West in the past has taken place in Northern California, Oregon, and Colorado, but obviously they can't have an in-person Briar West this year, so they are doing it online. This event is going to be great for anyone to join, especially if you are new to the model horse hobby. You'll be able to learn more about the hobby and different aspects of model horses, like you can try your hand at photo showing if you've never done a live model horse show or photo show before, or you can participate in online workshops. This event takes place February 26th through the 28th. There are a ton of artists that will be participating in this event that you'll actually be able to interact with. Someone you might recognize here on YouTube, Vincent Lang of DaVinci Creations, will even be on there. There will be a Zoom cocktail party on Saturday night. That sounds really fun. And then they also have time set aside for the live workshops. You can view the full schedule for Briar Boot Camp on their website. You do need a ticket to join the event, but the tickets are only $5. If you want to join virtual workshops that are happening, you can join them in two different ways. There is a $10 fee for just viewing the workshop as it's happening on Zoom. Or you can pay $40 and receive all the supplies you need to complete that workshop at home and actually interact with the workshop instructor during that live Zoom meeting. There are three different workshops available and you can sign up for as many of them as you want. They are taught by the talented artists of Melanie Miller, Maggie Bennett, and Shauna McDaniel. You can read about each workshop on the workshops page of Briar Bootcamp. The other event that the Briar Bootcamp offers is model horse shows. These shows will be open to the US and Canada, except for Quebec. I'm sure as much as Briar wishes to have these types of shows worldwide, remember that they are having to operate under different state and federal laws that probably put restrictions on what countries they can allow these contests to. Of the model horse shows, there are two different ones. There is the open show, which is for the more experienced showers. And then there is the youth and novice show, which is for those that are new to the world of model horse showing. And even adults can enter this online youth and novice show. That's kind of a rare occurrence, so even if you are an adult and you've never done a model horse show before, but you're really interested in giving it a try, this Youth and Novice show is a great place to start out. The photo shows will be taking place on a website called Pony Bites, which as that website says is meant to replicate a live showing experience in a virtual format, but with some major enhancements and none of the downsides of a typical photo show. I haven't personally used this site before, but it does sound like it's a good place for the photo shows to take place. The Briar Bootcamp photo shows do cost an additional fee. It is $50 for the open show and $25 for the youth show, which may sound like a lot for a photo show, but keep in mind that Briar does say here that winners will receive rosettes and prizes. Someone asked if they would be sending out the flat ribbons, and apparently they will not be sending out flat ribbons for this particular show, but they'll still be doing rosettes and prize models of some sorts, most likely current Briar regular runs perhaps. The full information, rules, class lists, and all that fun stuff is on the Briar Bootcamp Model Horse Photo Shows page if you want to check it out. I myself am considering joining the Briar Bootcamp Open Show, especially because I don't know if I'll actually have time to join the Briar Fest Open Show this year or not. I really would like to do it again, it was really fun last year, but I'm worried I might have too much on my plate at that time of the year with my other Briar Fest plans that'll be going on. We'll see, but I am considering joining the Briar Boot Camp show and then also its other offerings. So there you guys go, the basic rundown on the Briar Boot Camp. I wanted to mention it since maybe a lot of people haven't heard of it yet. Take note that there are no special runs or special event models like Briar Fest with this event. It is not a shopping event like Briar Fest, but it does focus on other aspects of the hobby. And again, I really would recommend it, I think, especially if you are newer to the world of Briar and model horse collecting. We'll now move on back over to the news about Briarfest. 
The Briarfest website was updated to include some information and an entry form for the Artisans Gallery, Vendors Marketplace, and Briar Swap Meet. These are all virtual, of course, but basically Briar is giving the opportunity for people to pay to have their store or website advertised during Briarfest. The minimum amount to do this is $50, which gets you a digital listing and a promotion before and after the event. There are several different price points up to $150, which is the highest, and that price point will also get you a dedicated promotion and a one-fourth page advertisement in the Briarfest program, which Briar will have a Briarfest program, but based on what they've said, it will only be digital. The deadline for applications is May 1st. You do need to be a VIP or all-access ticket holder to apply. The full information is posted on their website and that form if you are interested in applying. I'll link that in the description down below. Let's move on to talking about Briarfest tickets and other FAQ that they've come out with. They did release some more ticket information, including the price of each ticket. They are $230 for the VIP ticket, $75 for the all-access ticket, and $20 for the general admission ticket. Comparatively, the all-access ticket is like a three-day ticket, and that is actually $10 less than the usual price of the three-day tickets before. But the general admission ticket, which is like the former single-day ticket, is about $3 more than the old single-day price, if that makes sense. And I'm really sorry for any new people to Briarfest that are probably very confused about why we keep comparing these tickets to three-day tickets and one-day tickets, when all the tickets this year are three-day tickets. But as the Briarfest veterans know, we're very used to the three-day and one-day ticket system. This all three-day ticket with three different tiers is very confusing to us. They also shared a bunch of FAQ on the Briarfest blog. Some of it I already talked about in the past Briarfest news video, but there's also some new information in here, so I'll go through the new stuff with you now. Briar said that the all-access and general admission tickets will go on sale to the general public on January 25th. And if you're wondering about the VIP tickets, I will be talking more about those a little bit later on. Actually, by the time this video comes out, the first chance to buy VIP tickets will actually be already happening. Briar goes on to explain the tickets a little bit more and how much they are. Again, it is $75 for the all-access and then $20 for the general admission. There is the question of if you need to pay shipping on the Briarfest tickets, and that is a no. You actually usually never had to pay shipping for Briarfest tickets, even when they sent you physical tickets in the mail. But this does say that Briarfest tickets will not be mailed. It is going to be all digital. Briar did also address that there will be no early bird ticket option this year, and with it that means there is no early bird raffle model. That is rather sad as the early bird raffle models have become one of those stable aspects to Briarfest. My guess is that there might be legal issues involved because of trying to do it online. They might not be able to really easily do the early bird raffle model. I know they did do it last year, but I don't know. It also might just be because they are doing the VIP tickets early that maybe there's something with that that they don't want to do the whole early bird thing. There could be a whole bunch of reasons why. It is a little sad that they're not doing an early bird raffle model this year, though. They again state that you do need a briarhorses.com account to buy tickets. Then there is this one little interesting blurb that has the question, how many tickets can I buy? And Briar answered with, Briar reserves the right to monitor Briarfest ticket purchases and refund ticket purchases at its discretion. This is really interesting because Briar never before ever said like, oh, you can only buy so many tickets. They've always been like, yeah, buy whatever you want. Buy as many tickets as you want. What this kind of sounds like to me, even though they didn't officially state it, is that they're probably watching the tickets to make sure that there's not dealers going on and buying like 20 tickets and buying up as many models as they can and all of that stuff. That's what this kind of sounds like, that they're going to be keeping an eye on things and make sure that no one goes overboard on trying to buy models to resell. They mention again that there is no special run time this year. It does say that the link to fill out a preference form for the special run models, if you have an all-access ticket, will be emailed in early June. So if you're planning on getting the all-access ticket and don't know what preferences you want to do yet on your special runs, don't worry, you've got lots of time to think about it still. Again, here's the question of single-day tickets, and they state again that single-day tickets will not be on sale, but you can buy the complete set of the event stablemate models, and those will be available to all-access and general admission ticket holders. 
Although if you buy that complete set of stablemates, it does say that they will not come with additional access to the event. Again, they stated the hours, which I talked about in the last video, and accessing Briarfest through your Briar Horses account. Then there's a question about the Celebration of Horses show. It says for 2021, all Briarfest guests will be able to watch the Celebration of Horses show. It will premiere for guests Friday, July 16th, 2021 at 6 p.m., and then be available for viewing at your leisure for the rest of the weekend. And I'm assuming that 6 p.m. is probably Eastern time. I think last year, if you were a single day ticket holder, you weren't able to watch the Celebration of Horses show. So that's really cool that this year it's going to be open to everybody. And last year, it was such a cool show. I absolutely loved seeing it. I never saw the Celebration of Horses show before. And last year's pre-recorded version, of course, was different than the usual show but I thought it was absolutely beautiful, and so I would recommend definitely checking that out when Briarfest rolls around. A common question that's been asked and that I've been wondering too is, will there be a diorama contest or best customs contest this year? And Briar said, yes, more information on this summer's contests will be released soon. I'm really excited about that because depending on what the theme of the diorama contest is, I may want to enter it this year. And then more stuff on shopping here. I did go over some of this already and it's actually interesting. They talk more about the cart timer. They said, we understand that Briarfest guests would like a timer on their shopping carts to ensure that items they put in their carts will remain available for purchase. A timer is not currently offered on our web platform, Shopify. It is not something that our independent website, which is hosted by Shopify, can simply add on. We are working with Shopify app developers to determine whether or not a cart timer is something we can add to our cart system. So obviously that is something we are just going to have to wait and cross our fingers for that they will be able to get something worked out where a cart timer will be able to be developed and applied to the Briarfest event. Now for a really important topic, which is about shipping. Briar states in here that they will be doing what they did last year, where domestic shipping to the U.S. is free. Shipping to Alaska and Hawaii is a $10 flat rate shipping. And then all other international is $25 flat rate shipping. And an interesting note is they said that all VIP all access tickets will not be charged shipping whether you are domestic or international. So if you are someone that is international, that VIP ticket is probably sounding like a really good deal now because you will get that extra benefit of not having to pay the $25 for shipping. When asked, will all my purchases be shipped together? Said they'll be using the most efficient and cost-effective shipping methods possible over the course of the event. We want to make sure all your purchases and event models arrive to you safely. For international and Canadian customers, it does say a shipping charge will be applied to each order that you check out with. However, orders will be consolidated and you will be refunded for shipping overages. You will only be charged shipping on the number of shipments that are actually sent to you, regardless of the number of orders you place during Briarfest weekend. And then the final question on this page is about not getting emails from Briar. When we say emails are going out, it's likely that at some point you unsubscribe from Briar emails. Unsubscribing from one email list ends up unsubscribing customers from all our lists. So if you're worried about getting emails, you can resubscribe at briarhorses.com if you scroll down to the bottom of the page. Next up to talk about is the VIP tickets, and there's just, oh my gosh, there's so, so much to talk about with this. Now at this point in the video comes out, I feel like a lot of this is already going to be kind of old news. But in case you haven't heard about the VIP tickets or you're still confused about it, then you'll want to listen into this part as I go over all of the information that came out about the VIP tickets as well as talking about some numbers related to the VIP tickets and Briarfest in general. On Friday, January 15th, Briar opened up the opportunity for people to enter for the chance to purchase VIP tickets. And I'll read the information that was posted on this entry page for the VIP tickets because it does talk about what's exactly included in the tickets and how many there are. And I feel like this is important information to go over, even if the time to enter for the lottery for these tickets is over. And there is still one more chance for people to purchase these tickets, so I think it's still worth talking about. VIP all-access tickets for Briarfest 2021, Horse of a Different Color, are limited to 1,000 tickets. To ensure we are able to offer this opportunity to as many fans as possible, we will be offering 800 of the VIP all-access tickets for purchase via random drawing first. 
Individuals selected will be able to purchase one VIP ticket each. Please note that there is no purchase required to enter, and if selected, there is no obligation to purchase a VIP all-access ticket. The balance of 200 Briarfest 2021 VIP all-access tickets, plus any remaining from the original 800 tickets as of February 1st, will be available for purchase on a first-come, first-served basis to all. The VIP all-access tickets are $230, plus the cost of the special run and limited edition models chosen, and include standard benefits of a Briarfest 2021 all-access ticket, plus the following benefits in bold. One complete set of Briarfest 2021 Stablemate models, an $80 value, and I will be talking about these models later in the video. One Briarfest VIP swag bag with exclusive VIP merchandise, a $50 value. Briar has not revealed what is included in this swag bag, and I have a feeling they might not ever mention it until you actually receive the swag bag in the mail if you're a VIP ticket holder. Access to exclusive VIP workshops. Access to exclusive VIP content. I think that's also interesting that there is VIP exclusive workshops and content. I'm very curious to find out what the difference is on those. A $10 discount code for Briarfest merchandise on briarhorses.com. Ability to pre-select and pre-purchase two special run models and two limited edition models. Additional costs apply. Standard benefits. Access to Briarfest. One Briarfest 2021 Celebration Horse Model. Access to Briarfest Contests. Open to legal residents of U.S., Canada, excluding Quebec, and U.K. only. Access to enter Briar Model Horse Shows, which are only open to the U.S. at this time and have additional fees. Ability to add on workshops. Additional fees apply. I should mention that they haven't released a whole lot of information on the workshops yet, but based on how they're doing the Briar Bootcamp workshops, I'm guessing there's going to be something kind of similar like that that they're going to be doing. I'm guessing they'll have options where you can actually purchase a kit that will be mailed to you in the mail, or you can just pay to watch the workshop. None of that's confirmed yet, but that's just based on that Briar Bootcamp workshops, how those work. It says to note that all access tickets include the ability to submit a preference form for special run models prior to the event. Model purchase is not required nor is selection guaranteed, where the VIP ticket allows pre-selection and pre-purchase as described above. It goes on to say that Briarfest VIP all access ticket holders must pre-select and pre-purchase two of this year's stunning Briarfest special run models and two of this year's incredible Briarfest limited edition models at the time of their ticket purchase, guaranteeing their selection. Again, says that the models are an additional cost, and it gives the price range for these models. It says the special run models range in price from 60 to 85, and Briarfest limited edition models range in price from $15 to $75. Your cart will reflect the total price due for your ticket and selected models. So while before we weren't sure if the models would have to absolutely be bought at the same time as the ticket, but this clearly states that you do have to purchase the models at the exact same time as you purchase the tickets. You unfortunately can't do like a deposit on them or pay for them later or anything like that or even not choose to purchase any models. It sounds like if you do the VIP ticket, you can't just decide not to buy the special runs and limited edition models. You have to make your selection on those four models. Then it does say that the VIP All Access Swag Bag, Celebration Models, Event Stablemates, Special Run Models, and Limited Editions ship the week of July 19th. July 19th is that Monday after Briarfest, so it means they will be shipping them out right after Briarfest, so you will not have that stuff before Briarfest like I kind of hypothesized earlier, but you'll hopefully get it somewhat soon after Briarfest. And then it also mentions again that if there's any tickets remaining as of February 1st, that they will be available for purchase on a first-come, first-served basis to all. So even if you miss the chance to enter for the VIP ticket, you still have the chance to try and get one on the first come, first serve situation, which is probably going to be crazy. I know one of the biggest things that's been talked about is how expensive the VIP ticket is, but if you add up all that's included in this ticket, it equals to $215 value of things you receive, and then you have that additional $15 which is probably more than worth to pay for the chance to pick two special runs and two limited edition models of your choosing and be guaranteed them. Now, of course, the most difficult part of that cost is also having to purchase those four models at the time of the ticket, which is expensive. 
But do not forget that this is not the only ticket type as we've already talked about earlier in this video. There is the all access and general admission ticket and you will still get the chance to get the special runs you want with the all access ticket. I'm going to shortly break down the numbers here. But this VIP ticket is supposed to be that premium top tier ticket and this is brand new to Briarfest. This is not something they've ever done before. I'm surprised they haven't done something like this before, honestly. A lot of conventions and events will do VIP like tickets and they cost a ton of money, but then they give you all these extra privileges and stuff. 1,000 VIP tickets may sound like a lot to some, and it does sound like a lot. Like, oh my gosh, VIP ticket holders are going to buy up all the special runs. They're just going to buy everything, but they're actually not. They are still limited to that two special run models per ticket as talked about. And I did some math on how many special run models are being made this year in total. If you add up the quantities of all nine special runs, it equals 20,100. That is a lot of models. That means if there are 1,000 VIP ticket holders and they all purchased two special run models, that would mean VIP ticket holders could purchase 2,000 of these special runs. But that is only a little over 10% of the special runs available. That means 89.95% of the special run models will be available to all access ticket holders. Now there is the problem that since VIP ticket holders can choose whatever models they like for these special runs, however there will probably still be that restriction though that they can't buy two of the same special run, they have to buy two different ones. So it is very possible that the most popular special run models will have a pretty big quantity decrease by the time they get to the all access tickets. So yes, that aspect of the VIP tickets is a bit of a bummer. And in theory, there is actually one special run model this year that could sell out just from the VIP ticket holders. And that model is Gnosis the Bull, because there are 1,000 made of him. In theory, if every VIP ticket holder bought one of him, he could sell out. But a lot of collectors don't collect the non-equine animals or don't have this model at the top of their want list, so I highly doubt that he'd be completely bought up by the VIP ticket holders. But then there's also a special run this year that you absolutely do not have to worry about selling out or having an extremely hard time to get, and that is the Surprise Horse, which has 6,000 of them made. Even if every VIP ticket holder did purchase one, there would still be 5,000 Surprise models left, which is still even more than the quantities they've made of the Surprise Horse in previous years. So my guess so far is that model should be one of the easiest models to get this year. Regardless of the special run models that the VIP ticket holders pick, there will be a decrease in the number of special runs available to the access ticket holders. Which, yes, is kind of a bummer because we know that the most popular models are going to be even more difficult to get but there will still be some available to all the access ticket holders to get. The same goes for the store specials, but the store specials do have big quantities this year, a lot bigger than in previous years, which I think will still have lots to offer for the all access ticket holders. Note, I'm not saying that I think these models are not going to sell out. I think they are all still going to sell out still, but I'm saying that hopefully it will be a lot easier to get these models compared to how it was last year because they did increase the quantities of everything so much. Uh, no matter how you look at it, it is true though that you won't have as much of a fair chance to get all the models you want with this VIP ticket in play. It is especially not fair to the people that can't afford to pay for the VIP ticket and special run models now. Then there's the other side of the coin where the VIP ticket holders probably feel like paying that much for that ticket that they deserve to have that chance to purchase whatever special runs they want the most. It's kind of a tricky situation on trying to determine if the VIP tickets are really fair or not and everyone's opinions on them are going to differ and that's okay. This ticket tier is a whole new thing for Briar as I've mentioned they haven't done a Briarfest ticket like this before so it's really going to be interesting to see how it works out this year and if they're going to use it again in the future because you know they're probably going to want to make this ticket option available again next year if it is very popular. Even at in-person Briarfest I could imagine them wanting to do this VIP ticket because there's all kinds of opportunities they could include with a VIP ticket for in-person Briarfest. Just kind of spitballing ideas here but they could have things like exclusive guest horse meet and greets or an exclusive Kentucky horse park tour or just different things like that 
that could be in the realm of possibility for these future expensive ticket tiers. Remember, that's just kind of all speculation. I don't know if they're even going to use the VIP ticket again. They might only use it this year, but I could imagine them using it again in the future. From a business perspective, it absolutely makes sense for them to keep this ticket option around for future Briarfests. And I do want to bring up the numbers again here before we get into model reveals. I'm sorry if you're not nearly as fascinated with Briarfest numbers as I am, but based on the special run quantities and the assumption that each VIP and all access ticket holder gets the opportunity to purchase two special runs, we can figure then that about half of the special run total quantity will equal the number of both those ticket types sold. Since we already know there are 1,000 VIP tickets, we can deduct that from the special run number, which means there will be approximately 9,050 all-access tickets available. We don't know for sure how many general admission tickets there will be. They didn't specify on this number, but I'll just say it's roughly around 3,000 general admission tickets sold, probably, possibly more, but it's at least 3,000. Also, from those ticket numbers we just did, we can assume there will be at least 10,050 of the Celebration horse made. Possibly even a little more than that if they give the Celebration models out for different promotional things or to staff or guest horses, things like that. Lastly, for talking about numbers, based on the special run quantities, how do these tickets that allow you to access the special run models compare to last year? Well, last year there were 16,400 special runs made in total, which means there were roughly 8,200 three-day tickets available then. That's roughly a 1,850 ticket increase from last year for the tickets that included the opportunity to purchase two special runs. And that is a pretty big increase, although with the quality and desire of these models that are coming out, I wouldn't be surprised if they do sell out of Briarfest tickets again this year like they have the past two years. Especially going to guess they're at least going to sell out of the VIP and all access tickets. Over 10,000 tickets is still a lot of tickets, but considering how many people are wanting to participate in Briarfest worldwide, I could see these tickets possibly selling out again. While working on this video, some new information came out about Briarfest, and so I'm going to be shoehorning this section of the Briarfest news in. I already recorded the later segment of this video, so you won't hear me talk about this new information, but it will pertain to the models, so let's go ahead and talk about it right now. Briar said big Briarfest news due to overwhelming demand and popularity of the limited edition models. We are making some exciting changes to the available quantities. We hear you, we see the response to these incredible models and want to make this Briarfest experience as enjoyable and smooth as possible for everyone. Apollo Del Soros, Reverence, Queen of Hearts, Favreau, and the Best of Briarfest Stablemates set will all be available for back order when the initial quantities are sold through. I will be showing and talking about those models in the next part of this video. Or check in each morning for new inventory. We want you to be able to enjoy Briarfest, not spend the weekend refreshing. VIP ticket holders will be guaranteed July shipment on their purchases. All backordered models will ship in December. We cannot guarantee delivery for the holidays. The remaining limited edition items, Crystal, Plush, and Limited Edition Stablemates model. The Plush and the Limited Edition Stablemates have yet to be revealed. Stay tuned. So those two will probably not be shown in this video, but I will be showing the crystal. Those models will not have a back order option as those quantities were already significantly increased from Briarfest 2020. Back orders will be accepted through the close of the event, Sunday, July 18th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Eastern. The orders will be shipped in December. Please note, delivery is not guaranteed before the holidays. Orders are not limited and can be ordered on any ticket holder's account. The special runs are not affected and will not be able to be backordered. These models will still be assigned to all access ticket holders via their preference list. So that is some very big news and kind of similar to what they did last year in a way, because last year they ended up making glossy versions of the three store special portrait models and giving ticket holders the option to purchase those models. It did take a while for them to come. I received my glossy cheesecake and glossy Benelli a couple weeks ago. So it did take them a while to get there. It sounds like they are going to try to make sure those models that come on the back order will be coming sooner in actual December. And I know that probably is not quite as fun having to wait that long for some of your Briarfest models like that. But that is something that hopefully will ease a lot of minds of people. That they won't have to worry about their favorite store special selling out. I'm sorry, I keep calling them store specials, I realize. And they're calling them actually limited edition items. But you guys hopefully know what I mean. 
So in the next part of this video, I am going to be talking about all these different models and I will be saying their quantities and stuff, but keep in mind that those quantities are just the quantities of the ones they're going to have available already, but you will still be able to buy more. So there will probably be more quantities than what they initially put out for these select models. The only models I'm going to be talking about here in a minute that aren't affected by this is the Crystal and the 9th Special Run model. This should be pretty recent news as I put this video out, so I'd also love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments about what you think about these models being able to be backordered like this. But let's now move on to the model reveals. Since the last Briarfest news video, there was another special run that was revealed. Once again, this summer's Briarfest will feature nine special run models available to our VIP All Access and All Access ticket holders. This year's series of models plays homage to a range of art and artists throughout history that we hope has left you feeling inspired. This next model is in honor of the most modern of artistic media, photography, and we are thrilled to share this timeless beauty with you, Ansel. Ansel Adams was a lifelong environmental conservationist who was born in 1902 in San Francisco and spent his youth in the Sierra Club. He began his photography career in the later 1920s and is widely considered to be one of the greatest photographers the world has ever known. His famous black and white landscape images evoke incredible emotion and his controls of exposure and film development to balance light and dark are unsurpassed. He was a champion of the beauty and splendor of the natural world and is believed that Adams's photographs helped to preserve the unspoiled landscapes that were the blossoming national park system. To pay homage to this incredible artist, our Ansel has been done in a stunning blue roan frame Overo Pinto, reminiscent of Ansel Adams' evocative photographs. Done on the brand new Morgan mold number 807, sculpted by Kylie Parks, this model was most recently seen as a 2020's premier club release, Troubadour. Ansel is $70 each and there are 2,000 pieces of him made. This is a very pretty model and it is very reminiscent of these beautiful black and white photographs. I also really like that Briar included the photography side of art to represent a model. I think that is really awesome. Like the other special runs, this model has brown tricolored eyes. He also has a pink peachy muzzle, two hind socks, and a very fun Overo Pinto pattern. It looks like he has some lovely shading going on on his haunches and his shoulders. For myself, I'm not sure if this model will be on my want list yet or not. I do think he is very beautiful and I do like blue roans a lot, but I'm just not super crazy about this mold, at least not yet. I think it's because I haven't gotten to see the Troubadour mold in person yet. I'm not exactly a huge fan of Morgans. I like Morgans, don't get me wrong, I do like them, but I'm just not crazy about them. So maybe that's also why I haven't completely fallen in love for this mold yet. I also just have to be more picky about which models I purchase because I have too many of them and I keep buying them and I need to downsize my collection. So yes, this model is gorgeous and I like him, but he's just not at the top of my want list. Now we move on to our first limited edition portrait model. Meet Queens of Hearts, better known as Josie. While Josie looks every bit the typical Bay warm blood on her right side, it's her left side that has been known to turn quite a few heads as it's covered in unique white brindle markings that resemble stripes. These markings, which only appear on one side, may possibly be the result of her being a churma, which occurs when two non-identical embryos fuse together in utero. The 2002 KWPN mare has been owned by Gabriella Savetery since 2009. They enjoyed a successful career in the Children's Hunters together, including being the 2012 and 2013 first overall fences and reserve champion at Zone 2 Hunter Finals. In the adults, they most recently were the 2020 M&S 2'6 adult medal year-end champions. While Josie's time in the show ring is slowing down, Gabriella's bond with her once-in-a-lifetime horse is as strong as ever. For Briarfest Horse of a Different Color, Josie has been immortalized as one of the traditional 1 9th scale portrait models that will be available in this year's limited edition collection of models. These models are $75 each and there are 3,500 pieces of them made. I think like most people, I was hoping that Briar would have some kind of brindle or weird color mutation horse in the lineup this year, so I am excited to see this particular model. They did do a similar pattern like this one on a live auction model in 2017. I'm very curious to see this model in hand to see how they do the pattern on it. 
because in this photo it almost looks like the white part on the model was sponged on with a stencil or something like that. So I'm wondering how the pattern will be made and what it will look like on the mass-produced model. This model in the picture is obviously a production sample of some kind as it does have some overspray on the base. Of course the models people will receive will not have this overspray. This model does have some lovely details like the spots above the hooves, the striping on the hooves, and painted horseshoes. I can't tell if this model has tricolored eyes or not, but it doesn't look like it. I think they are just black and white eyes, but they still look nice and very glossy here. Normally I don't collect the braided mane and tail version of the Bristol mold. I actually technically don't even collect the Bristol mold and yet I still have two models on it somehow. So while I normally wouldn't buy a braided mane and tail Bristol model, I have to make an exception for this model purely because it's a very neat color. You met our first Summit Edition model this morning, Josie, one of our traditional scale portrait models. But alongside Josie in the Limited Edition Virtual Shop, we have a bunch of other fun models. For this afternoon's reveal, we are thrilled to be able to introduce fans to Prisma, who will be available to Briarfest ticket holders as a part of this year's Limited Edition collection of models. Prisma has been done as a 5-inch crystal model based on the Sherman Morgan mold, number 430, sculpted by Jana Mielen Hendrick. This handsome figure will be the envy of curios everywhere. Prisma is $45 each and there are 2,000 of him made. I think this is a very neat crystal horse, but it's a very easy pass for me because I do not collect the crystal models. This mold does seem to make a very nice crystal piece though. I do think that his tail looks really cool in crystal. It looks like a beautiful flowing waterfall. If I collected the crystal models, I'd definitely probably want to add this guy to my collection. But since I do not, he will not be on my want list. We are so excited to get our Briar Shrink Ray fired up for this fun set. Can you believe it's been 10 years since Briarfest Fairy Tales? We could hardly believe it ourselves. To celebrate this exciting anniversary, we've shrunk down some of that year's incredible traditional scale prize models into these adorable stablemates. These models will be available in Series 2 of our Best of Briarfest collection and will be available as part of the limited edition offerings. As a reminder, the limited edition store is open to VIP, all access, and general admission ticket holders. Grim, mold number 5610, has been inspired by Perwalt, the early bird raffle model from 2011 and has been done in a sooty palomino blanket appaloosa. Loxley, mold 5734, has been inspired by Nottingham, 2011's volunteer model and has been done as a lovely bay roan. Thumbelina, mold number 5628, has been inspired by Tom Thumb, that year's Briarfest Open Show Reserve Prize, in an adorable dapple buckskin. Pendragon, mold number 5621, has been inspired by Camelot, the grand prize for the 2011 Briarfest Open Show, in an eye-catching Bay Tobiano. Into the Woods, mold number 5736, has been inspired by Happily Ever After, the diorama contest prize model from 2011, and done in a beautiful dapple pearly gray. It is $60 for each set of these stablemates, with 3,500 sets made. This is a really cute lineup of stablemates, and I really like that they are done after the Briarfest 2011 models, as that was actually my first year at Briarfest. And I honestly can't believe it's been 10 years since then. It is crazy how quickly time flies. For myself personally, this set is not on my want list, despite it being connected to that sentimental Briarfest. I do really like what they did with this set and how these models match up to their traditional counterparts, but this set is just not a must need for me. I do really really like the Into the Woods model. He is my favorite in the set by far. Maybe someday I'll get him second hand or trade for him or something at some point. The little Darwin in this set is also really neat and I know a lot of people are very excited about him. But overall I'm just not feeling compelled enough to purchase the whole set especially because there are several special run models I want this year, and I'd rather put my money towards them. But this is a cute set, and I do like that Briar is doing this series of Stablemate Mini-Me versions of past Briarfest models. Then we move on to another portrait model in the limited edition lineup. To call Half-Arabian Reverence well-rounded would be an understatement. This buckskin Overo Pinto competes in both Arabian and Pinto Horse Association events. In the Arabian world, Rev has taken home the half-Arabian Legion of Honor and two top 10 placings at nationals. On his Pinto side, he's earned two PTHA world champions in halter and in overall color. 
and five reserve champions in color, hunter under saddle, English pleasure, and western pleasure. He also earned the Western Dressage Association of America's Register of Merit in 2020. In addition to being the 2020 Western Dressage Reserve Champion at the Region 9 Arabian Championships, owned by Daniel Davis and Holly Anders, Rev immediately grabs the attention of spectators everywhere he goes. While it's Rev's color that first draws everyone's eye, it's his presence and gait that keep it. At only five years old, Rev is already showing how extremely versatile half Arabians can be. He's recently added trail and ranch riding to his resume, as well as welcomed his first offspring. This model is $70 each, and there are 3,200 pieces of him made. I quite like this guy. He's another model I think is going to have to go onto my want list. He's got a very fun color and pattern. His color does look a tad off to me in the briar pictures, just a little bit. I bet this model will look better in person though, because sometimes the briar product photos do look a little off in color. For example, the model Top Gun last year, he looked kind of green in pictures, but in person he was not green like that. The real horse that this model is based after is also so gorgeous. I couldn't help but notice that the real horse has some really beautiful mapping on him. I do kind of wish that this model had some mapping like the real horse, but that obviously would have made him more expensive and difficult to produce and then sell. So I get why Briar didn't attempt to do mapping on this model. I just think mapping would have made him extra wow. I do like how intricate his pattern is, and he has some very cute spots on his nose. The other side of him also looks really nice with how his black mane flows over that intricate pattern and just kind of breaks it up a little. It looks really good. So yes, this is probably another model that's going on my want list, partially because I do like this mold, despite me not being a huge Arabian person. I do like some of the Arabian molds a lot. And this color is just so fun and flashy. I just really like it. We move on now to what would have normally been considered in the past a pop-up store classic. It's Sunday morning here in New Jersey and the entry period for Briarfest Horse of a Different Color VIP All Access Tickets ends tomorrow. It has been a wild ride revealing all these amazing special run and limited edition models to our fans and we still have a couple more up our sleeve that you'll see later today and over the next couple days. For now we'd like to introduce you to this year's limited edition Freedom Series 1112 scale model inspired by the incredibly timeless works of Louis Comfort Tiffany, Favreal. Favreal glass is a type of iridescent glass that was first manufactured in Queens, New York, in 1896 using a special patented process. This model, done on mold number 669 and sculpted by Maggie Jenner Bennett, released as the popular American Dream model, has been done in a kaleidoscope of colors inspired by Favreal glass. He sports a bright multicolor deco with a shiny gold pattern on top that is a amalgamation of zebra and tiger stripes as well as leopard and cheetah spots, finished with a glossy top coat. This model is $30 each and there are 3,500 of him made. Oh man, oh me, oh my, oh me, Briar, Briar, why are you doing this to me? Why are you making such beautiful decorators? Seriously, I love this model. And normally I don't get the Briarfest Decorator Classic models. I generally like them, but I often don't buy them. In fact, I technically only have one Briarfest Decorator Classic from a previous Briarfest, which is the Rockabilly model from 2013. But this guy this year is a must-have for me. In fact, he's probably one of my favorite Briarfest 2021 models. He's got so much going on, and I just love him. Right off the bat, he's on a wonderful Mustang mold sculpted by Maggie Bennett, which I was hoping would be the mold for the Decorator Classic this year. This model has a color scheme that you can really see that came from that Fervil Glass inspiration, which I think is really cool. The color scheme on this model does also feel kind of very 80s, 90s to me. Those bright electric blues and greens and pinks, it just feels very much like a 90s or 80s model. But what really throws this model over the top for me is that gold striping and spots. I am usually not a fan of gold, but when Briar does gold accents and patterns on models like this, I think it just looks really good. I find it also fun that this model is a combination of zebra and tiger stripes and leopard and cheetah spots. I think that's just a really fun mashup of all those different animals, and I feel like they executed it very well. I'm just absolutely loving this model. He is just so bright and fun and colorful. Plus, he's glossy to help bring out all those beautiful bright colors. So this guy is an absolute must-have on my list. 
The next model is another traditional scale portrait model. Meet Apollo. When we saw this stunning stallion, we thought for sure we were indeed staring at the god of the sun. With a coat of gleaming metallic gold and dark green eyes, PRE stallion Apollo del Solis is no stranger to attention. As a two-year-old, he won his stallions class at the Andalusian World Cup and has been awarded the best movement honors. In 2020, he was approved as a PRE breeding stallion by ANCCE, the National Purebred Spanish Horse Breeders Association. Owned by Summer Ranch, Apollo is the result of their thoughtful breeding program that brings together beauty, talent, and temperament. Until recently, Spain had called rare double pearl coats like Apollo's Isabella, but now registrations would call this coat Bay Double Pearl. As a double pearl, Apollo will give the recessive pearl gene to each of his offspring, which expresses itself in metallic shades when combined with another pearl gene, and will emulate a cremello or permello when combined with a cream gene. With his coloring, movement, and personality, Apollo's future as a sire looks as shining as his coat. He is $75 each, and there are 3,500 pieces made of him. I have to say right off the bat that the real horse this model is based after is just gorgeous. I mean, oh my gosh, look at that adorable face. What a handsome boy. I do love this model's color. I love these rare dilute colors like Cremello and Perlano. And this guy is considered a bay double pearl, which is obviously just a beautiful color both on the horse and on the model. Overall, I think I do like how they did this color on the model. I do feel like the legs are a little dark compared to what the real horse looks like, at least in the pictures I found of the real horse. If you see the pictures of him, his legs are pretty light compared to the model. That's one thing that's bugging me a little bit on this particular model is that his legs do look a little too dark. However, I do love the mix of shades in his mane and tail. I love how those blend and transition from some darker shades to lighter shades, especially in his mane. I think that looks really nice. I really love that they actually made his muzzle a dark peachy color mixed with then some gray, which looks just like the real horse, so I think that is a really nice touch and not something I feel like we see on Briar models a whole bunch. I also do love the little sun brand that is on the other side of the horse. I feel like that really just emphasizes that this horse is so beautiful and shiny like the sun. I do kind of wish that this model was on a different mold personally. I do really like the Esprit mold. I have like eight models on this mold, so it's not like I don't like this particular mold. It's just I think I would have liked to see this color on the Duende mold, but that's more just a personal preference. I still think I want to get this model. The next reveal is of the Event Stablemates, which were formerly known as the Single Day Stablemates. This year's Briarfest has been inspired by color, creativity, and community, and we felt there was no more inspiring way to bring that theme to life than through an exploration of the art world. We've traveled back in time and across the globe learning about historic works and influential people, but for this year's event stablemate models, we've been inspired by broader strokes. Art movements. Dada Mold 5733 has been named in honor of the post-World War I art movement inspired by a rejection of logic and reason and embracing nonsense and satire. Dada also just happens to be the colloquial French term for a hobby horse. Our Dada has been done on the Galloping Arabian Stallion, sculpted by Tabitha Pack in a shaded flaxen blue Sabino Pinto. Nouveau, mold 749, has been named for the late 19th century art style that embraced the natural world, particularly the shapes and curves of plants and flowers. Done on the Mini Fighting Stallion, originally sculpted in traditional scale by Chris Hess, Nouveau has been painted in a stunning combination of gold, orange, and teal inspired by the work of Czech painter Alfonso Mucha. Rococo, mold number 5748, is our tribute to the glorious, ornate 18th century French style of architecture and decoration that embraced pastels, gilding, motion, and drama. Done on a mini Smart Chicolina, originally sculpted in traditional scale by Susan Carlton Sifton, this showstopper has been done on a pearl and rose gold frame Overo Pinto. Avant-garde, mold number 5743, is a late 19th century movement that began in France and was inspired by social change, whose contributors to this day challenge current cultural values. Our tribute to this inspiring movement has been done on the Norwegian Fjord stallion sculpted by Bridget Ibero in a lovely purple dun with four socks. Our VIP all-access ticket holders will receive a complete set of these beauties as part of their VIP all-access ticket inclusions, an $80 value, 
General admission tickets, which will be on sale soon and will be $20 each, will each come with one randomly selected events stablemates model. However, general admission and all access ticket holders will have the opportunity to purchase a complete set of these models. More details on that soon. Limited quantities of 2,500 four packs are made, 3,000 are made available as Gambor's choice. Now, for my own thoughts on these models, I'm admittedly a little disappointed. I was hoping I would really like the event Stablemates this year, but I'm not really in love with them. I do like Dada. I like the blue and the pinto pattern on this one, and also I do like the mold. He might be my favorite of the set, and if I end up getting the VIP ticket and get a set of these guys, I'd definitely probably keep that one. I almost like Nouveau. I like the orange and turquoise on his coat, but I really do not like those yellow markings. I think that was not a great choice because, at least in these photos, those yellow markings make him look like he came from a smoker's home. He looks like his plastic is old and yellow and dirty, and it just kind of takes away from how pretty the rest of his design is. If his white markings were white, I would have loved him. I even did a quick Photoshop edit to see what he would look like with white markings, and I do like that so much better than the yellow markings. I'm kind of so-so about Rococo. At first glance, he looks like a Palomino, not a decorator rose gold. Maybe he's more rose gold looking in person, but in this picture he just doesn't really wow me. He does look like he has a very cool pinturn pattern though, I'll give him that. Avant-garde is pretty neat. This is another one I may end up keeping if I ended up with this set, but I'm not 100% sold on him either. I'd have to see this model in person, I think. But because he is purple, I may end up wanting to keep him anyway. So overall, I wish I was in love with this set more. If I do end up getting that VIP ticket, I probably will be looking to trade one or two of these guys for something else, like maybe past event stable mates that I've been really wanting, like Toe Tapper from 2019, for example. I'm still sad I didn't get him like I was supposed to. So maybe I could trade them for a stable mate that I've been looking for. But there's the event stable mates for you and my own personal thoughts on them. That is going to wrap up this video, but look out, there is more Briarfest content coming your way. I am working on my Surprise Horse Speculation video right now, and also survival guide videos for virtual Briarfest. If this is your first time to Briarfest and are still a little confused and overwhelmed about what's going on, don't worry, I will be making at least one video that will go through and explain how everything works, hopefully in a simplified, visual way that can help. This was a very long Briarfest news video, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. Let me know down in the comments below which of the limited edition models is your favorite so far. There are the three traditional portrait models, the crystal model, the set of stable mates, and the decorator classic. So let me know which of those models is your favorite in the comments below. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and have an awesome day. Bye everyone!